quick, quick. I need this to be quick, quick because I'm a minute late. I'm a minute late for the Katie's arms. So hello everybody, finally, 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 we get to do a Katie's arms. It's been long, I feel like I've missed. I don't know how many I've missed, but I feel like I've missed a few. Um, so hey, hey everybody, how are you doing? All is well, don't worry, nothing's changed. I'm back on the, back on the barefoot. Um, much to say. <laughs> oh my God, we're so many people. <laughs> Slightly terrifying. Hello everybody, we're now in our thousands, would you even believe? Um, thank you to everybody on the road who keeps turning up with bottles of this for me. <laughs> it's like, here you go bird, keep drinking, everything will be all right. <laughs> Just keep drinking. <laughs> Hello Toronto, uh, California are here, Glasgow is here. My necklace, I think I've got it on slightly the wrong way around. Should I try and correct it actually? Because look, this is plain. There is, a, there is a side that's proper. Also, I shaved my armpits this morning so I can do this. <laughs> Texas is here. Yes, come on. Great hospital chat earlier this week. Oh yes, we've got that to talk about. You're here for Philip Schofield. You bet you are. Uh, oh, thank you, someone. Sunburn, not really, it's not sunburn. It's not sunburn, darling. It's the beginnings of a tan. And given that we haven't seen the sunshine here for uh, how many months? Nine months. I couldn't give a rat's ass in hell if I burn. Bring it. Burn me. Really? Burn me. You know, I know skin cancer. I know you're supposed to care. But frankly, I couldn't give a shit. I just want to be tanned and feel better. So it's not sunburn. This is... This is pre-tan, quite obviously. Now, hold on, is that right? Yeah, look. I'm trying to show you, see that, look, it's got a pattern side. And I think earlier I just put it on wrong. Um, Ireland is here and Norwich. Good vitamin D, exactly. So I never understand. I came from the school of, well, school of sunburn, actually. I used to get sunburn as a child. Um, we've got to be drinking, obviously. Uh, we'll talk about sunburn in a minute. Schofield's gonna get it. <laughs> he is. <laughs> Shouldn't celebrate. We we are better than this. Mm? We shouldn't celebrate someone's downfall. But on this occasion, fuck it, we're going to. Um, can I just say, please, Bristol Blue Glass. Everybody's so sweet. Everyone's turning up at uh, speakeasies and stand-ups with gifts. But this lovely, look at this beautiful thing. If I break this, I'm going to just, I'll be so cross with myself. Bristol blue glass. And it says on it, it's very exciting. Lots of love, Katie, from down on the farm, Bristol. And it does, it's, it gets me going a bit because we had such a lovely, lovely speakeasy time in Bristol. And of course, I would never disclose where we were or where the location is or anything. But please know um, so someone like Bristol, you know, where Bristol, the heart of like the woke rah, crazies, two nights, people preparing to just live separately from the bullshit of the government. And um, the farm will always be a super special memory for me. We had a glorious time and a DJ afterwards and uh, food provided and... I had my own little caravan to get ready in. It was very, very exciting. Have a drink. Yeah, exactly. Come on, everybody. You know, you're not supposed to, um, you're not supposed to encourage people to drink, but fuck it, come on, let's drink. Um, hi from Bath. Cheers, cheers, cheers. Uh, so, <laughs> love seeing you at Backyard Comedy Club. Should we go large? Let's go large. Shh. Let's not tell anyone. Shh. It's our secret. Also, we're celebrating because... Phil Schofield is fucked. Oh, I've just realised. If I take my glasses off, I can't see what you guys are saying. <laughs> so, <laughs> hold on. Okay, they're back on. <laughs> uh, what's my favourite wine? This. Uh, Barefoot Merlot. So, if you don't drink it, my husband says it's shite uh, because he's a snob. And uh, he comes from Watford. His school was burnt down. Most of his school friends are in prison. But he's the snob. And I'm supposed to be the toffee-nosed cow and I couldn't give a single shit. So um, here, that's what I drink. Barefoot Merlot. It's very cheap and uh, just like me. So um, Schofield, so fucked. 
so, so fucked. So he has had to do a story exclusive with the Daily Mail. And I don't know if you know what that means. But it means the Daily Mail have got him. I would say over a barrel, but I think that might be how he likes it. Oh, oh, oh. They, so he's had to do a statement for the Daily Mail, which means the Daily Mail have got something on him because they've managed to manipulate him into that. So he's confessed that he had an affair during the time he was married. Yeah, no shit, Sherlock. Just call us Poirot. Um, that he, uh, Rogered, Wadgered the uh, Wanna. <laughs> he Wadgered the Wanna on this morning, <laughs> which we all knew about because some people were, were very sore things there and um that uh he didn't tell anyone and his agency so he's got an eight you know agents super powerful they negotiate the contracts they get you all the mega bucks they take 20 percent commission they run your life he's been with the same agent for 25 years they have just binned him <laughs> they were like you lied to us yeah no fucking shit they knew they knew but they were happy because they were taking the money because they were everyone was taking the money and they all knew so please 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 over the next few days i'd follow you into battle yes because we would win my darlings we would win we would hold the line we would hold the line and we would win because you know i always say follow me you know i think it's a much better uh military discipline follow me we would win uh, <laughs> so Every, everybody knew. That's what you have to bear in mind. Not just, not just Holly and everyone's going to go for Holly now and whatever and great. But everyone knew. So Holly's kind of irrelevant because and her husband's super powerful at ITV and in TV land, which is why she gets all the gigs. Go up the chain. Go up the chain. They all knew. The agent knew. Everybody knew. And no one said anything because they enjoyed the money. And he is, you know, if there was a regular person just kind of banging kids, they would be locked up or they'd be humiliated or we'd be like, you pedo, you know, get out of here. He was doing it and the nation was like, ah, oh, that's going to feel pop from us because we knew better. So him, remember him in the royal box looking smug, handing out awards. Oh, you're so, you're so brave, banging a runner. Not going to look very brave by July. <laughs> I would suggest he may have left the country by July because that's when the runner can, can... I don't even want to... Can you even imagine the amount of money the runner is being offered right now? Guess who has got an agent right now? The runner. And guess what's happening right now? The son, so Murdoch... And Mail, Mail Online, so everything under Lord Rothmere, they will be, so there'll be a manager and he will be bartering this contract. So there'll be a haggling, who gets the runner's story? And that's how this works. There's a sort of auction of the runner and his, what can I say? The runner's anus. So how this works, uh, and I know because, uh, you know, I've sold stories before, whatever, I'm, that's fine. That, I'm not, you know, I uh, News of the World wanted it back in the day and another paper. And so there was an auction and that's why it got the price it got. Anyway, I think mine was about having sex in a field. Quite proud of that, actually. So, you know, fine, pay me to tell, me, tell you something I'm not ashamed of. You can't shame someone if they uh, refuse to be shamed, right? Yes, I had sex in a field. It was quite fun, actually. I got grass on my ass. Fine. No one had to watch. I didn't invite a photographer. So if you think I want to be ashamed of that, I'm not. And you know what? As I age, I get more proud of it by the year. <laughs> now I've reached the point I would never get my labia out in a field. Many of you know why. Um, you know, it'd be like a friggin... Well, it would honestly be like a, be like a ground sheet, to be honest. It would be like a... You know, would be like a large curtain. I think we've got off the subject. Yes, the anus of the runner. 
So basically there is an auction happening as we speak for the anus of the runner. And everybody wants to tell the story of the anus of the runner because it's probably actually going to be the biggest story this year. You look at views around scope, it's the biggest media story there is because we're all loving it. And we shouldn't, and we know it's naughty, and we know it's bad, but it is so fun. I can't even, I don't even have to stand up for him because he's not one of ours. He hasn't been holding the line. He's a complete dickhead. Otherwise, you know, I would find myself in the position of wanting to kind of be kind, but I, I don't, I couldn't give a shit. So, the runner's anus. That story, I don't know how small it was. Shouldn't speculate. I'm sure he'll tell us. is being auctioned off. Uh, I would say the Sun will be bidding, uh, Made Online will be bidding, I don't know who else. And then they'll be bidding for his story, so a documentary. That feels like Channel 5, doesn't it? The story of the runner's anus. Do, 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 do. So that will be in the bidding. And Schofield knows all of this is coming. And his agent and Mr Perfect Pets, what about that? What's the, um, quickly someone telling me, what's the car company that he was advertising for with all those bastard, boring, bastard commercials that made you go, oh, fuck off, every time they came on. Um, wine in hand, ready for the gossip. I know, we're, we're all over it here. We've got this. We're, we're gossiping like crazy. Well, I need someone to tell me that, like a wizard sleeve. Did you just call my vagina a wizard sleeve? I wouldn't say wizard sleeve. I would say more... Well, we did batter daffodil once before. It's more like, yeah, I don't know what it's like, but wizard sleeve is too hackneyed. Um, we buy any car, we buy any car. Look at everybody, everyone's like, we buy any car, we buy any car. So what we have to think of now, let's do this tomorrow, well, no, not tomorrow, because I'm supposed to be having a weekend off. Uh, we buy any car. So let's get ready for social media on, what day should we do it? Should we do it for Monday? We buy any car. Because I think we could do a really fun thing with we buy any car, couldn't we? We bum any, I don't know. Going to take some work. But I think we buy any car, because I'm sure they have an Instagram page that I could copy in, right? And maybe I could do a phone call to them and ask them whether we buy any car has ever, you know, participated in underage bumming. Um, because I'm sure they're not going to enjoy, in fact, maybe they'll be out coming, they'll be having their press teams meeting, they'll be having PR teams in, they'll be having reputation management firms in. I mean, this is the super fun thing about this, right? If you imagine a, a, a pond, right, a still pond, so the water's all flat. Now imagine you get a fucking great breeze block, right? And you drop it into the pond, yeah, boosh. Those ripple, basically Phil Schofield is the house brick, but with more anal sex. If you drop the house brick into the pond, right, ripples, ripples, ripples. That's what's happening right now. So we buy any car, crisis meeting, how do we get Phil Schofield off our pages? How do we pretend we never knew him? How do we, how do we? High up at ITV, how do we distance ourselves? Well, I wasn't the one who gave him a contract, nor was I, nor was I. Well, I never even knew him. Who is Phil Schofield? I've never heard that name. Mm. Holly Willoughby should be paying hundreds of thousands for reputational management in order to distance herself from Schofield and suddenly buddy herself up with someone else. This is a nightmare for her because we all know she knew. And then you've got brilliant people who've held their uh, gunpowder for so long, Eamon Holmes and his wife Ruth. They can sell stories if they want to. And I strongly would, I would love it if Ruth would because Ruth, of all people, was the one who spoke out. And because she put the complaint in at ITV, that's why they were got rid of. That's why they were just eradicated. That's why they shoved Eamon out. And Eamon still hasn't got over it. I'm sure he won't. Um, I don't speak for Eamon in any way. But it really hurt their souls because they were so good at what they did. And all to protect a man that everyone knew was bumming a runner. Not to mention whomever else. Because their stories are about to come out as well. <sighs> I might have to get in touch with Phil and ask him if he still wants to take the piss out of my kids' names because 
it might be true that India is the name of a country, but then I never fucked a kid. So... <laughs> I know, right? We have to... Did I know about Jason Donovan and Phil Schofield? <gasps> no, but that makes perfect sense. All done in a coat of many colours. It is so funny. I mean, it's so terrible. And I feel kind of a bit... I do feel a little bit bad in the sense that, you know, we try and be... Don't we? We try and say... <laughs> I don't feel very bad at all. I think I think I I think I know I should feel a bit bad because we shouldn't be doing this. But it is so fun. The only thing that could top this now, I've just got to pull my shorts out my ass. The only thing that could top this weekend would be Michelle Moan in handcuffs. That that if that happens tomorrow, that's like that's like a good weekend, right? Like some of the biggest cretins in history and, and specifically, you know, not that it's about me, but of course it's about me. Uh, Michelle Moe, Phil Schofield, people that sort of dined out on me being an uber twat, whatever. Uh, like seeing them all fall now is super fun. I just love it. <laughs> ah, my friend seems to think the runner wasn't young. Wait. No, he was. I know him. I, I, know, I, I mean, I... I knew them. We all knew of them. And it was bef way before. I mean, there's talk of, in the Daily Mail where he's fessed up. He said it since they were t he was a teen. I'm sorry. It goes back before that. It goes back before teenage years. It, and it doesn't, it doesn't matter, really, because once you've bu bummed a kid, you've bummed a kid. It doesn't really matter what age they are. Does it? Oh, I don't know. What do I know? Fuck, it's awful. But he, I, I can only suggest that he leaves the country or gets in the bottom of the sea. <laughs> 13 he was. Yeah, maybe. Maybe. Oh, he was 20. Wait a minute. Are you defending Phil? <laughs> Have a look at when they met at drama school, when the kid was doing acting classes. See how old he was then. Huh? Huh? Anyway. What's going to be fun is watching Holly Willoughby try to distance herself, ITV, all sweating in their pants because they've taken big fat salaries, they've all made a ton of cash, and now they're going to want nothing to do with it. And we all can just sit back and watch and laugh as we are. Um, nine, when he met him, yeah. Have a look at the acting school that the kid was at when Phil Schofield was in touch with him. Then you'll get an age. But this is all going to come out and we can just sit back, tan ourselves, watch and sip wine and kind of have a bit of a laugh about it, which is, as far as I'm concerned, bloody perfect. <sighs> Good. We should talk about some other things that aren't Phyllis Schofield related. So still on tour. Uh, May was always going to be the big month and this week was Bethnal Green. So like Tower Hamlets. I know. Not my normal, not my normal home, you might think. Um, Shamima Begum territory <laughs> but it was just brilliant Bethel Green was brilliant Tower Hamlets was brilliant our crowd uh, at Stand Up we sold out ages ago so I'd like to go back but um, you know coming through the, well, there was a lovely comment which I shared because it has nothing to do with me that's what I say all the time right this, that none of this has anything to do with me this is all about the audience right so our audience at Tower Hamlets they're just super young super hot super from all over the place two people meeting there who they did have tickets for Stafford but Stafford had no spine absolutely no balls between them Keith and Gary who know me at Stafford who were texting me saying they're looking forward to me coming who said they were super fans Keith cancelled on 500 people who bought their tickets and so two people who were going to be there came to Bethnal Green, Tower Hamlets, and met there and were in the audience together, which I just loved. Um, and it was just glorious. There was one lady there, super young, and she had the best boobs. They were truly, I don't know if you're here, but they just, she just had these terrific boobs. And I was like, oh, your boobs are terrific. And she was wearing them really well as well. I mean, you wear your boobs how you wear them. But what I mean is she had them all up and in a top and busting out. So she was kind enough to be my, where's my pen? She was my Sharpie holder. I don't, hold on. I'm just going to reach for my Sharpie. 
I'm not sure if you've... Sorry if you've just got a view of my arse. So, you see, I can't... Look. <laughs> look. <laughs> Hold on. Hold on. So, basically, right, the idea is I would put my Sharpie here. Hold on. Okay, so I'm giving you a sense. <laughs> this is what should happen, right? But it didn't happen for me. So, because obviously I went... <laughs> But at my stand-ups, these ladies are my Sharpie holders because they have such great tits. So they, when I do signings and stuff at the end, or I sign people's bodies or whatever we do, we're just basically having hugs and having a laugh. Um, someone acts as my Sharpie holder and they, oh, damn it. <laughs> and they put, they put the Sharpie. Uh, anyway. I think you got the point. And as I was telling her that she had great boobs, her boyfriend came over. He's this really, really sweet looking, good looking guy and just put his little arm around her like, she's mine. And it was very sweet. Uh, would I do I'm a Celeb? I did do it once uh, and I was very quiet. You wouldn't have even known I was there um, because I just come out of The Apprentice and I was kind of shocked by what happens. I never knew what media was. And so I kind of ran away to the jungle. I was very quiet and I got along brilliantly with Biggins and Rodney Marsh and just hung out quietly. So no one knows I did. I'm a, I'm a celeb. Uh, I've got the hat and everything. Uh, so, yes, I would do. Well, there's a particular show um, on TV. You can probably guess it. You could do that job. What would be my, be my pen holder? There's a particular TV show uh, that is kind of reality that I keep being asked to do. And I keep saying yes. And I would love to do it. I would love to do it. And what happens is these talent bookers, they want me to be on the show because they know, you know, we'd have you and me and us and the audience at home. We'd, ha we'd have a laugh if I was on there because, you know, it's my kind of gig. And what happens is the, the talent people are like, yeah, you're perfect. This is perfect. And then it goes up, it goes up and, and I'm in. But then as soon as it gets to the channel, Channel 4, uh, it gets, it's crushed. And it happens every time. Um, so uh, that's what's happening, basically, is that bookers, producers, young, young talent people, the people who go out and find the people for these shows are like, oh, we'll get Katie and she'll be ace. And then, of course, it hits channel where I think there's just a universal ban on me ever being on a screen again at some sort of police level, <laughs> intelligence level. And it just gets kiboshed. So so just know that and know that I'm absolutely willing to do it. And also, uh, it's not it's not hunted. No, it's um, it's one of the toughy shows. And the reason I want to do it is because, you know what? I am an older, like I'm headed to 50 <laughs> and I don't, I have half a head and, 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 right? Not Taskmaster, harder than that. Naked attraction, fuck that. Not getting my labia out on camera. Jesus Christ, they'd need a friggin' fisheye lens to get this thing in and be like, but that's be that show where they lift from the bottom up and the person has to choose. If it was me, they would start from, they would start lifting up, right? And then there would be like, they'd just get to my shins and then people would start to see my, my labia. And then, and then people would be like, no, I won't be picking the red one, thanks, because I can see her labia. And we're not even at her knees yet. <laughs> So, yeah, no, uh, I would do more TV and uh, only because it makes me laugh, you know, that that I would get to be us on a TV <laughs> and the edit would be so hard for them because they'd be editing stuff out like crazy. <laughs> anyway, um, right. So it's 25 past. I always let you go on time or I try. So if you have any questions, I'll try. Yes, I got to Australia for Celebrity Big Brother. <laughs> I, I always knew in my heart I would never make it on the show. I always knew I was going to speak out. And I always knew it might end badly. <laughs> Didn't realise quite how badly. <laughs> Didn't realise I'd get banned for three years. But, you know, fuck them. Uh, um, I would have been very 
disingenuous and inauthentic to myself if I had gone on that show when I knew people were being crucified. So I'm very happy with what I did. Uh, comment on Phil. Jesus Christ, I've talked about Phil endlessly. I'm not talking about him anymore. How come I haven't said anything about Scope until now? Holy shit. Have you not seen some of my stuff from back before? Have you not seen what I've been saying for quite a long time? <laughs> Eamon Holmes and I, Eamon, bless him, it doesn't matter, but Certain people have been thanking me for all I've been saying for quite a long time now. But it doesn't matter. If you need to blame someone, blame me. That's so fine. You think I should be on GB News? Um, I'm not I'm not allowed on there either. I'm banned from GB News as well. I think because of this kind of intelligence level uh, ban on me appearing anywhere. Because I'm too much of a bad influence on you people. <laughs> Are we doing a show in Cheshire? I don't know. I don't know. So if you go any of our shows that we still have at katiesarms.com. So Katie's Arms. Uh, hold on. These need some work. Katiesarms.com. And there'll be a new show uh, uh, in October. So October, November, I'm going back on tour because uh, I love it because... You guys are awesome because I think it's what I'm supposed to do, because our side needs to be uplifted and because I refuse to stay down. And uh, uh, so, so absolutely, I'll be back on the road. We'll have more tickets, a whole new load of venues uh, in October, November. And if you happen to know a venue that would hold and, and they need to have a spine, they need to not be run by a council, and they need someone there, usually a strong woman, who's going to say, let's give people the freedom to choose who they come and hear. If you know of a venue, do email lovely mark landlord, landlord at katiesarms.com. Yes, and we will always, we always get in touch with the venues and I have a personal conversation with them. And I say, listen, you're going to get some shit. Are you happy with it? Can you hold? And uh, we just gained one more venue actually this week doing exactly that. Uh, please come to Lincoln. I'd love to. Um, OK. Oh, oh, it's all a bit serious. Schofield laughter. Yes. I mean, what can I say to you other than enjoy, enjoy, enjoy. No, everybody knew up and down. Please know that Alison Hammond, Dermot, everybody knew as well. So even the new faces being brought in, they all knew. Watch Holly, watch the PR campaign around Holly Willoughby. It's going to be fascinating. Holly on her own. Holly with new friends. Holly having oh, coffee with Alison Hammond or maybe a burger. <laughs> Jump on wombers. Um, oh, Holly and Alison have been friends for so long. They go back years. Yardy blah. Oh, here's Holly doing something really nice with children. Oh, here's Holly doing some charitable work with children. Oh, get ready, because it's coming, it's coming, it's coming. And right now, her, her husband and ITV are shitting themselves. So my advice to you would be to enjoy it. Enjoy it. Enjoy, didn't he groom Holly though? Oh, fuck that. You know what? Let's not make excuses for tossers. You know, you do shitty things, frickin' own it. You're Holly Willoughby, own it, you knew, right? If you want to call out the bullshit, call it out. Yes, you'll be deported. Yes, you'll be bad. Yes, <laughs> your country will try and humiliate you. Yes, someone may come and take your house one day, but at least you can be honest. Good. Okay, my loves, um, I will uh, speak to you somewhere soon. I'll be on the road again, really excited. Uh, this week is because Stafford were can I say it? Because Stafford were fucked hearts and spineless and cancelled on 500 people and didn't ever, have never once given me a call, even though they know me, to let me know. It's okay. Uh, a secret speakeasy venue popped up. And so even though Stafford cancelled, I'm going to be in Stafford later this week. I uh, can't tell you where, but uh, that will be glorious. So thank you for that. Um, last few of Live, Laugh, Love for this tour and then many more dates, I promise you, back in uh, October, November. 
Mark keeps extending that, I hear. He's like, you know you said you'd be on tour September, October, November. Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, so I'll see you summer. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for um, for being part of Katie's Arms. Thank you to everybody come, that comes up on the road and says that you enjoy it because you get to escape for half an hour. And honestly, you know, you'll know that's all I'm trying to do is is be honest, be real, acknowledge that we live in truly mad times, but we can get through this together. And as you can see, uh, we are many. And as I tell everybody at every event, everywhere I go, you're not alone. Um, we are many and we are stronger together. So cheers to that. And I look forward to seeing you all somewhere on the road.